tonight, the terrifying moments aboard an Alaska Airlines flight after a hole blows open in the cabin at 17,000 feet. The FAA quickly grounding nearly 200 other planes. New video shows the dramatic near disaster, a nightmare scenario for passengers. The clothes on one child sucked out, oxygen masks dropping. We hear from those on board. And I just feel the plane drop. I started freaking out. Now the investigation into what went wrong. Is this model of plane safe? The storm system now pushing into the northeast. Snow and ice triggering a series of crashes. Nearly 50 million Americans bracing for a serious snowfall. Will some major cities get their first significant snow in nearly two years? Why was the defense secretary's health scare kept secret? Lloyd Austin was in the ICU for four days this week. The Pentagon not telling the president or the public for days. We have new details. Good evening, I'm Peter Alexander in for Jose. And tonight the FAA has ordered the temporary grounding and immediate inspection of nearly 200 Boeing 737 MAX 9 aircraft after that terrifying mid-air emergency Friday night. Check this out. This was the scene in the skies above Portland, Oregon after an entire panel of an Alaska Airlines plane broke off mid-flight. As you can see, it left that gaping hole on the plane's left side and passengers rushing to put on oxygen masks as they stared out at the night sky. Amazingly, the Alaska Airlines flight landed safely and no one was seriously hurt. But the frightening episode is raising new concerns about the safety of that aircraft. We have two reports tonight, beginning with Dana Griffin. About eight minutes into Alaska Airlines Flight 1282 from Portland, Oregon to Ontario, California, sheer panic as a piece of the plane went missing. The Friday night sky suddenly widely visible from inside the plane as the crew scrambled to keep passengers alive. Just to press air to declare an emergency, we need to descend down to 10,000. A cabin panel blew clear off this Boeing 737 MAX 9 aircraft. Loaded with 177 passengers and crew, the scene on board remaining eerily quiet. A lot of people around me were a lot calmer than I would have thought for a situation like this. An emergency landing back to Portland. Passengers applauding the crew's actions, relieved to be alive. This wasn't in every emergency door. That refrigerator-sized hole in the plane appearing to be an emergency exit is actually called a plug door. To passengers, it would look like any other window seat. There was thankfully no one seated near the window. Luckily, according to passengers, no one was seated in that spot. There was a mom and a son sitting in that aisle, and the son's shirt was like completely blown off, and his body was extremely red. I'm assuming due to like irritation of the wind. Reaction to the incident coming swiftly with the NTSB investigating. The FAA is requiring immediate inspections of certain Boeing 737 MAX 9 planes before they can return to flight. Alaska Airlines immediately grounded its 737 MAX 9s for inspection. The airline says it has already checked a quarter of its fleet with no concerning findings and that aircraft will return to service as their inspections are completed with our full confidence. Boeing today saying safety is our top priority and we deeply regret the impact this event has had on our customers and their passengers. The airplane manufacturer saying it will support the NTSB's investigation. A nighttime flight leaving passengers stunned by this scare in the air. We're so grateful we weren't higher in the air like um, that more things didn't fly out that no one flew out I think that's incredible that we're all safe and Dana joins us now from LAX Dana what kind of impact is this having on flights today yeah, Peter, according to data from FlightAware, Alaska has had to cancel more than 140 flights. Now, we can't know for sure if that's because of those grounded planes, but it is far more than any other U.S. airline, even United, which had to ground part of its fleet, so far experiencing 70 cancellations. Peter? Dana Griffin at LAX. Dana, thank you so much. The astonishing mid-air scare is raising urgent questions across the entire aviation industry. And while a full investigation could take months, we are getting a few early details about what might have caused that Alaska Airlines emergency. Here's Jesse Kirsch. Hours into the investigation of that gaping hole aboard the Alaska Airlines flight, tonight one expert says early signs point to a possible manufacturing issue. This airplane was about two months old, and that was it, and had about 100 and less than 150 flights on it. 
Former NTSB and FAA official Jeff Gazzetti says this Boeing 737 MAX 9 was modified, requiring fewer emergency exits because it had fewer passenger seats. That missing section was a covered door. It was deactivated and then paneled over. So it's something that Alaska Airlines maintenance folks wouldn't normally be touching. All of a sudden I heard like a big bang. Gazzetti believes the scary scene was caused by cabin pressure pushing out on increasingly thin air as the plane climbed. That happened really at, at a lower altitude than I would expect, which kind of tells me that that door was, uh, was really not doing its job in keeping the pressure inside of the fuselage. Cabin depressurization can turn deadly. In 2018, this Southwest flight experienced an uncontained engine failure, sending parts into the fuselage, destroying a window. A woman was partially sucked out and died. Following this latest Alaska Airlines incident, NTSB investigators will scrutinize the production process, aircraft maintenance, and crew response. Should people be worried about other Boeing models that they're flying on that are recently produced models? No, I don't think so. Based on what we know now, this does appear to be a uh, isolated event involving one specific type of aircraft. Tonight, dozens of those airplanes getting a closer look. Jesse Kirsch, NBC News. Now to our other big story. The first major winter snowstorm of the season is starting to wallop the Northeast, bringing a punishing mix of snow, bitter cold, wind, ice, and rain, you name it. George Solis reports from Scranton, Pennsylvania, where snow is already starting to come in. Tonight, the first winter storm of the new year, slamming the eastern United States. Heavy snow falling in West Virginia and Pennsylvania earlier today. We're excited, but we're hoping we can get through it. Then spreading north into New York City as flakes fell on the 30 Rock Christmas tree. The storm shutting down highways as it marched east. In Arkansas, this chain reaction crash backing up traffic for miles. In Florida, a tornado spotted causing this power surge explosion. Out west, extreme weather of another kind, causing a deadly 35-car pileup near Bakersfield. Authorities believe heavy fog was to blame. At least two people were reportedly killed. And in Tahoe, one after another, car sliding out of control. <laughs> crashing into other vehicles because of icy conditions. Back on the east coast, millions of people are under winter weather alerts tonight. And major cities from Philly to New York and Boston are getting ready. Here in Scranton, Pennsylvania, the Department of Transportation has wasted no time in preparing. We have all of our manpower, equipment and materials ready to go. A steady stream of salt trucks and plows. This right here, just some of the 800,000 tons of salt that will be used in Pennsylvania alone where it and crews go, determined at this command center. We have staff working 24 hours. Where teams track the storm and monitor roadways in real time. It's a big game changer. Uh, we like to have the most information possible to make the most educated decision. Back now with George, who is in Scranton. George, what are they doing there to try to keep the roads safe? Yeah, that's right, Peter. PennDOT is reducing speed limits and implementing restrictions to keep most commercial vehicles off highways as this region braces for as much as eight inches of snow. Peter. George Solis, thank you. And for more on where that storm is heading next, let's bring in NBC meteorologist Angie Lassman. She is in New York City's Central Park tonight. And Angie, remarkably, it has been almost two years since Central Park last got an inch of snow in a single day. Is this storm going to end that streak? Good evening, Peter. That remains the big question tonight. Earlier today, New Yorkers in Central Park were treated to some snow showers. Now we've transitioned over to a wintry mix with temperatures hanging out into the mid 30s. But there is another chance for us to see that nearly 700 day streak end as we get into tomorrow. Here's how the system works through the overnight hours. Widespread heavy snow across parts of New England. We'll see that rain snow line right, or right around the I-95 corridor. As the system moves offshore, those winds pick up. They become north and even heavier snow through your Sunday across parts of northern New England. That tapers off by the time Monday morning rolls around. As far as your snow totals are concerned, the highest amounts from Massachusetts to New York, places like Boston could receive up to 10 inches of snow, Peter, with Albany set to receive up to a foot. 
All right, Angie Lastman, thank you very much. And overseas now, where the war is escalating in the Middle East, you are looking at video of missiles fired from Israel into Lebanon today, striking back at the militant group Hezbollah. The two traded fire after Hezbollah accused Israel of killing a top Hamas leader. There are new questions tonight about why Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin's hospitalization was kept secret from the public, and as we're learning tonight, secret from the president for several days as well. It comes amid new details that Austin was not only hospitalized this week, but was in the ICU. Ali Rafa has the very latest. Tonight, a U.S. official confirms to NBC News that the Pentagon did not inform senior officials in the White House's National Security Council for three days that Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin had been hospitalized at Walter Reed Medical Center on New Year's Day. The news not shared with the American public until Friday, when the Pentagon announced that Austin was hospitalized for complications following a recent elective medical procedure. And NBC News has learned the 70-year-old Austin not just hospitalized, but also in the intensive care unit for at least four days, according to two senior administration officials. Asked why his stay wasn't disclosed sooner, a Pentagon spokesperson tells NBC News, this has been an evolving situation in which we had to consider a number of factors, adding Secretary Austin is recovering well and he resumed his full duties. The Pentagon declining to explain what Austin's procedure was and what complications occurred. The lack of information strongly criticized. The presidents have issues, the other cabinet members have issues, the public is notified. So there's no real justification. It's unacceptable. America's commitment to Israel is unwavering. The secretary in Israel as recently as mid-December, as its war with Hamas raises tension in the Middle East. On Thursday, the U.S. carried out a strike that killed an Iran-backed militia member in Iraq while Austin was hospitalized. And Ali is in Delaware tonight traveling with the president. A U.S. official, Ali, just moments ago tells me that President Biden was not informed about Austin's hospitalization for three days either. And you're hearing from the secretary himself tonight in a statement. What's he saying? That's right, Peter, the defense secretary taking full responsibility for what he says were his decisions about disclosure, saying in part, quote, I recognize I could have done a better job ensuring the public was appropriately informed. I commit to doing better. Peter. Ali Rafa with the very latest on that. Ali, thank you. And coming up next, new never before seen video from inside the January 6th attack on the Capitol. Former President Trump defending the rioters again today. Now to the secret world of retail returns and the surprising places that some of those holiday gifts that you send back really end up. NBC's Brian Chung shows us how companies and shoppers are cashing in. If you remember returning this grill, these mouse ears, or this holiday lawn flamingo, you might be surprised to find that holiday gift you just didn't want. Well, it didn't go back on the shelf. It comes to places like this where tens of thousands of items a day will come in, returns that will be someone else's discounted treasure. So how big is this facility? This building is just over 100,000 square feet and has about 10,000 items coming in every day. And Jeff Rexigal is the general manager of Liquidity Services, part of a growing industry of companies that have made a business off of returns with a boost from the holidays. Americans spent nearly a trillion dollars this holiday season and will likely return 15% of that, more than $140 billion worth of stuff. For retailers, checking returns, then putting them back on the shelves, takes time, costs money, and requires more staff. There's also an unboxing that has to happen. If a retailer is online only, there's a, a warehousing aspect. So instead, companies like Jeff's take the stuff off their hands and then turn around and sell it and they're busier than ever. Sometimes we will do this as a service to retailers, and sometimes we'll just buy this inventory from them directly. Each day, bringing literal truckloads of surprises. So what's coming off the truck? You don't know what's in there. Sometimes. Could be anything under the sun. <laughs> Step one, sort through all of those returned items. We're walking by pallets of mostly returns. And again, this is any kind of product. We see furniture. We see uh, home items, we see kid pools. Step two, inventory the items and check the quality. 
Then a quick photo for listing online where buyers bid. You win the auction, then you come and pick up your items. So you come here once a week about? About once a week. Wow. Stacy Adam buys home products at 80 to 90% off then resells them on Facebook. It's kind of like treasure hunting, right? It is. It's like Christmas every time. Giving returns a second life is a win-win. Shoppers save big, and that unwanted stuff doesn't end up in a landfill. Consumers really want great deals, and then they want product that they feel good about buying. Although, once taken off the lot, all sales are final. No returns. Brian Chung, NBC News, Pittston, Pennsylvania. And when we come back, there is good news tonight. The surprise family reunions taking social media by storm. <laughs> there is good news tonight about the love that grandkids share with their grandparents, no matter how old they get. Hi. Well, hi there. How is this for a surprise? We can have a sleepover. <laughs> Have a sleepover. Yeah. yeah. Karen and Wayne Gamble in Ohio had no idea their grown up grandkids would be showing up at the door. <laughs> one by one, all seven of them from across the country, after weeks secretly planning this that surprise really sleepover. Look, our favorite people in the world. It's part of a wholesome trend that's catching on adult Hi. grandchildren nationwide surprising <laughs> grandparents <laughs> with slumber parties. From Texas. <laughs> to Michigan. Hey, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> you're going to go sleep here tonight. Yeah. <laughs> and back in Ohio. Well, that's great. <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> yeah. well, to be clear, you have no idea any of this stuff is going on. No. Absolutely not. The cousins plan coming together in a secret group chat building up to that big night. Jammies, brownies, even Brooke's famous buffalo chicken dip. You don't mind, do you? <laughs> oh my gosh, no! Tori Halen had hustled back from college in South Carolina. They're so deserving of our time in every way. What were you thinking when you saw that door open and they just started coming in? I was so confused and so blessed that these seven kids thought so much of us that they wanted to spend another... <laughs> sleepover with us after so many years of doing the same thing with them. Nana, I hear the emotion in your voice. Why? <laughs> because they're so dear to us and they always make time for us and they're in the center of our world and they have been for 28 years. That's when this tradition began, when they were just kids sharing snacks, swapping stories and whipping up treats. They really just spoiled us and made us feel so loved. So this is all the plans all along? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys are something else. The perfect gift. Oh my gosh, this is an unforgettable <laughs> surprise. Oh now look what you did. I know. What does this experience tell us about the power of family? With that night, that they would find the time to share their love with us that we've come to treasure so much. I just wish everybody could have some of that, what we've had over the years. It's so important, and um, they are priceless to us, just priceless. What a great way to make new memories. That is NBC Nightly News for the Saturday. I'm Peter Alexander. We thank you so much for watching. Have a good night. Biggest surprise ever. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.